landscape renders are pretty hard to create in Blender, especially if you have less time and a slow computer. But I have figured out a way to create cool landscape renders, and I will break it down into four main steps that will make it easy for you guys to follow. The project file will be available on my Patreon, along with some free assets that will help you to follow along. A lot of people, especially beginners, tend to think that references are useless and skip this step. I, myself, do that sometimes, and those projects fail most of the time. So the best way to find references is to search on Google, take help from Google Image Search, or you can even take references from games or movies if you want. Storing all of the references is pretty easy. There is actually a free software that everyone uses for collecting references. It is better to get less references so that you don't get confused. Even three or four are enough. You can move them in different categories if you want to make it more clear. Now that you have collected your references, you can start building your base scene, which is also called blocking out your scene. You can use a free tool that comes with Blender, but I won't recommend it because it takes a lot of time to generate good results and has a learning curve. On the other hand, I like to use an external software called Gaia. I don't know if I am pronouncing that correctly. So I can't teach you the software in this video, but one of my good friend recently created a new pack which contains a lot of mountain presets, which are very optimized and customizable. It also has a free version, and the render in the thumbnail was also made with the free version. It's pretty good, you should definitely check it out. In this step, try to add terrain, block out the base and set up the camera. Increase the view distance and don't mess up the scale. Try to use the main human rig that comes with the Rigify add-on. Don't go to lighting yet, as it will obviously look bad and you will just quit your project. So have some patience. The third step is to start adding details. These terrains are good, but not good enough for close-up shots. It is because these are too large, and even if you use 8K textures, these will still look bad. So what you can do is use photo scans to fill up the foreground. And if possible, add another mesh like a plane and add some PBR material with displacement. I usually use Mega Scans, one of the best libraries, and I hope you all claimed it when it was free. I usually try to cover up the ground first. The best way I found is to add a plane, add some subdivisions, and add a shrink wrap modifier to attach it to the landscape. Don't go too big, just make sure it covers the ground that is nearest to the camera. Scatter some assets and duplicate some of these with Alt plus D and you are good to go. Just make sure this is set to inside and the offset is set to 0.3 so that it doesn't stick out of the terrain. This geometry node setup is free on my Patreon, along with some more stuff that I will talk about in a minute. You can also add a plane with a subdivision modifier and use PBR textures on it to boost the details. I mostly use this mixer node by foundations of earth utility node groups to mix two textures. Make sure to match the color of the assets so that you don't mess up. You can do that in post or you can just use the ambient occlusion node and create a mask which creates a blending effect with the material. It is super complex to explain so just copy this mask that I have made Add some Megascans assets manually to cover up areas where you see some blending issues so that it doesn't show up in the final render. Try not to mess up the scale of the assets and use a human rig as a reference. What I like to do is I use a character to tell the scale of the landscape and it creates an illusion that the landscapes are big. Try this technique. It will improve your renders a lot. Well, the best places you can find good assets for free are Polyhaven, Sketchfab and Megascans. If you are going for a forest look, try this tree technique by Martin. It will come in handy. Make sure you organize your file to optimize your project file or otherwise your PC will sue you. Now let's move to the last step, which is to light this all. First, add some fog into your scene. It can be heavy, but it is worth it. You can also fake it by adding a big plane with less opacity. You can remove its shadow from the object tab 
and play with its colour. I use both volumetrics and this technique a lot. For the volumetrics, add a big cube, remove the principal shader, and add a volume scatter node into the volume socket of the material output. I like to use something very low with high anisotropy. For the lighting, I am just using the traditional way, which is the combination of the sunlight and an HDRI. I have explained it in my last video. You can check that out. I have also explained nighttime lighting in that as well. So let me break down this scene. I am using the default HDRI that comes with Blender. You can find it on Polyhaven. I have angled it so the sun is coming from this way. I have used a sunlight which is in the direction of the HDRI sun and it has high strength. The secret source is blocking the light with clouds. You can add a big plane and rotate it until it blocks the whole light. Make sure its color is something dark so that it doesn't reflect light. Add a noise texture in the alpha with a color ramp and play with the settings until you get something you like. You can get this for free, along with the geometry node setup for scattering assets on my Patreon for free. Link is in description. For the background, you can use images of skies from Unsplash and add those with mesh as planes with emission shader. Make sure to uncheck shadow in the object tab so that it doesn't block any light. Make sure it's very big and behind the mountain so that it looks right. I have moved some of the assets to create some shadow which shapes the light to highlight the character. It will be different for you, so keep in mind to add some shadow near the camera to create some depth. And that's it. I have used the cinematic compositor in the post and this is the final result. All the files will be in the description. And if you want to support the channel, check out the cinematic compositor, which is now available on Blender Market, AKA Superhive, and Gumroad. A big thanks to James for providing me the foundation of Earth. This was just a quick scene I made for the video, but the original idea was to use it for my upcoming big project that will be epic. So subscribe and stay tuned.